this whole point here of the sign rule, it gives you results, but it's, it's not perfect, right? You've got to do a little bit of extra work. Is one of the reasons why we're going to look at today's concept, okay? So draw yourself up a new random triangle, but if you draw it like this, that'll help you keep up with what we're all doing. When we did this last time, we said, <coughs> excuse me, this is not right angle. This is not right angle. But we can put some right angle triangles in there, and then we can try and get some relationships in there. We used sine, and hence all of the science that we have here, right? But because sine looks like this, and if you have some value like, where am I, 0 0.57, okay? So if this is 1, then 0 0.57 is around there. I get my two solutions and that's why there's this problem, okay? But that only comes about because of what sine looks like. That's the shape of sine. So what if I tried something else? What if I tried, well, cosine is the next obvious choice, right? I've got sine, cosine, tan. So in this triangle, we're going to try and go through a similar process, but we're going to use cosine instead, right? It's not right angled. So in order to use the tr trigonometry that I know at the moment, I'm going to put some right angles in there. Does anyone remember, if I put this line down and it's perpendicular, what's that line called? It starts with an A. We tend to talk about planes having this kind of thing. It's the, um, it's the altitude. It's an altitude. Okay? Uh, also, in this case, it's the perpendicular height of the triangle. So I've got this labeled in. Because it is like the perpendicular height, I'm going to call this H. Right? And our conventions for signs and points and how they match up is that, for instance, if this is capital B, what would we usually call this length over here? Small b. We call it small b, lowercase b. Right? This is going to be lowercase c over here because it's opposite that sign. That makes this lowercase a down the bottom. Right? Now, I'm going to write this length just a bit further off. Okay? Because what I want to put closer in is the side lengths of these two smaller triangles I've made. Okay? So just for convenience, I'll call this little length here from here to that point. We'll call it p for point. I'm going to call BP, I'm going to call that length X, right? Because I don't know what it is, right? If that little length is X, what's the leftover? What is PC? How long is that? It's going to be, now I could, I could, I could introduce another letter, right? But I can phrase it in terms of the letters I already know, the primitives I already know. Yeah, it's, this length is the whole length, A, take away this X that I just introduced, right? So, so I could say, um, B, C, or I could just use my lowercase a, and that'll be um, nice and simple. Okay. So, are you happy with that? A take away x. Now, we're going to use cosine. Okay, we're going to use cosine instead of sine, but before I reach for that, I notice that because I've got these right angle triangles, I can use Pythagoras in this pair of triangles as well, right? Because h is kind of like the connecting piece between the two triangles, I'm going to say, in this left-hand triangle, in triangle A, B, P, okay? Through Pythagoras, I can make a statement about H squared, okay? Like this squared, that squared, and this squared, right? And at the same time, in this right-hand triangle, I can say in triangle, what's it called? A, C, P instead of A, B, P. I can say another thing about h squared. Now, just to pause, right? Mathematicians do this all the time. They look at the one object and they try and approach it from different angles, literally, right? Try and get a different perspective on the same thing. And that tends to yield insight, right? It's a mathematical thing to do. So, over here, right? h squared, it's not the hypotenuse, <coughs> is it? Okay? So, I can't say h squared equals something squared plus something squared because it's the shorter side. What should I say instead? I'm going to do take away, right? So I've got c squared, there's the hypotenuse over here on the left, opposite the right angle. Take away x squared. Are you content with that? h squared equals c squared minus x squared. <coughs> and that's by Pythagoras. It's an implication of Pythagoras. Over here, I'll do exactly the same thing, except this is my hypotenuse, right? b squared. What am I taking away? Yeah, I've got a minus x, and I've got to square that whole thing, right? The whole side, a minus x, that has to be squared. Okay? I need some more space, so bear with me. Now that I know what h squared is, and I'm seeing it from two different angles, because it's equal to this, but it's also equal to this, it's pretty reasonable to assume that this and this 
are really actually equal to each other. So I can kind of cut out the middle band, as it were, right? So I can now say, therefore, which side am I going to put on which side? I'm going to put, hmm, which way have I done it? I'm going to put c squared minus x squared equals b squared minus a minus x squared. Are you okay with that? You can see they're, they're both versions of h squared. You can tell with that. So if it's equal to that and it's equal to that, they should be equal to each other. So far, so good. Now, this is true. This is true. But I want to simplify this a little bit. And I know in advance, before I do anything, I should be able to simplify something. Here's how I know. Can you see there's an x squared there, right? Or a minus x squared. On the right hand side, there's something I can expand. Once I do it, because there's an x and it's being squared, right? I'm going to expect that there will be a minus x squared on the right hand side as well. If you've got the same thing on the left as you have on the right, you can get rid of both of them. Okay? So that's kind of what I'm anticipating. Let's give this a go. There's not much to do on the left hand side. Let's expand out this right hand side though. Okay? B squared take away. What is A minus X once you square it? What am I going to get? I'm going to get A squared minus 2, two what? 2 what? 2 AX, very good. And then, that's okay, that's why we're doing this now. And then you take that X and you square it, right? But because it's minus X and it gets squared, the negative disappears, doesn't it? So it's plus X squared. It's a bit small, but you see what I've done. Okay, so I've expanded that. And I still have my c squared minus x squared hanging over there on the left hand side. Okay. Now on the right hand side, I've got to take away in front of this whole set of brackets. Watch for this, by the way. I could have done this directly in one step, but because doing double negatives is an error that people make all the time, even people have been doing maths for a long time, it's worth doing that extra step to make sure we don't accidentally muck something up. So I'm going to do these one at a time. Right? I get b squared minus a squared. Double negative there, so plus 2ax. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. What am I going to have over here? Minus x squared. Ah, that was the thing I was looking for, right? Because I have a minus x squared here, and I also have a minus x squared there. That's really good, right? Because if I've got the same thing on both sides, 1, 2, I can get rid of it from both sides. Okay. So this is looking good. Now I just have c squared over there. Then I've got b squared minus a squared plus 2ax. Hmm. OK. You happy so far? Happy so far? Things are looking good. OK, now, what can I do with this? Because I have c, b, and a, right? That's really good. They're the three sides of my original triangle. You remember that? OK. But I've got this pesky x hanging around. I don't really want that to be there. Okay? Um, I want that to be replaced by something in terms of the A and B and C that I started with. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Where, where is X in this diagram? It's in this left hand triangle. This guy. Okay? That guy there. Right? So here's where I'm going to pull cosine in. Right? If I say, hmm, how can I get rid of the X? Let's think about things from this point of view, this little angle over here, right? I could have chosen a different angle if I wanted sine, but this angle is adjacent to x. Do you see that? It's adjacent, and that's why I go to cosine, because you remember that cosine is the one which relates the adjacent side to this hypotenuse, which is the, actually the side of the bigger triangle, okay? So therefore, I'm going to pause this for a second, and I'm going to say in triangle, now have a look, it's um, this guy over here, A, B, P. In triangle A, B, P. I can say, cause, cause of this angle over here, right, cause of B, cause of B, is equal to, what's it equal to? X over C, adjacent on hypotenuse. Are you happy with that? So now here, I just need to tweak it a little bit to say, well, what's x equal to? Once I've got x equals to something, I can replace whatever that's equal to. It's going to be c 
because B. Do you, do you see that? I just moved that C over the other side. Don't get freaked out that there are two C's in a row. It's okay. One's a length, one's part of cos. Okay, so now this is great. I can use this. I'm going to pop it up into here. Okay. So I can say C squared equals, let's have a look at this, 2A times this guy. This is what I'm replacing X with. Replacing X with. C cos B. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to do one more step to make this nice and clean. Okay. I can see C, A, B, and C, right? I could have rearranged them, I could have rotated them any way that I liked, right? So I could have, for example, instead of drawing this altitude, I could have drawn it that way, or I could have drawn it that way. Okay. So I'm going to rearrange the letters ever so slightly, right? From this line, I will use red. Okay. I want to say, okay, here we go. Should I get this right? I want C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap B and C around. Everywhere I see a B, I'm going to swap it for a C. Right? So that gives me a C squared there and a B. There. Whoops, I missed the plus. Okay, so all I've done, it's exactly the same statement, right? I'm just looking at it from a different angle, okay? Literally from a different angle. So I've swapped my B's and my C's, and they're all fine. Okay. Now, see how I've got an A squared and a B squared and a C squared, right? We use A squared and B squared and C squared in Pythagoras all the time. In fact, Pythagoras almost springs out of this, right? <coughs> Usually we have c squared as the subject of Pythagoras. c squared is equal to something, right? I'm going to make it the subject now. I'm going to say c squared is equal to, and so I've got to get all this other stuff on the other side of the equation. Do you see that? I want it by itself. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to add an a squared. I've already got a b squared hanging over there. This is a plus, so it's going to become a minus on the other side. And now I'm going to stop. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this. And I'll put a big box around it because it's called, and this is my heading, it's called the cosine rule. Okay. Just like we had the sine rule, this is using cos instead. Right. This thing is ingenious. This thing is beautiful. Right. What it shows you is, look at this. This part is Pythagoras. You know Pythagoras. We've been using Pythagoras for years, right? Pythagoras' theorem works in all triangles, not just the right-angled ones, provided you add this little extra bit over here. We're going to explore on Tuesday why this extra bit gets added and how it, how it modifies the triangle you've got, okay? Um, but we can use this anytime we like if we want to find a side, okay? So, you can put a big box around it, label it the cosine rule. Let me give you an example with concrete numbers. OK? 